Hello, welcome to the Amateur Machine Shop YouTube channel. In this episode, I resume making the tangential lathe tool holders. In part one, I roughed out the steel to make the tool bodies. Now in part two, the tool bodies will be machined to fit the 5 16ths high speed steel bits along with finishing the lengths and milling the notches. To drill the holes, each hole location was scribed. I then used an automatic center punch to make the initial indent. I have had my center punch for a long while. It is a cheaper imported tool, but works. Every so often I have to regrind the point as the tip isn't that hard. You can see the small indent in the steel. The automatic center punch works by releasing a small hammer under spring pressure when depressed to a particular point. A tumbler inside triggers the hammer to be released, which in turn hits the punch and dimples the workpiece. Since the dimples are shallow, I follow up the center punch dimples with a larger punch and a hand hammer. The punch that I use here was made from an old worn punch that came out of a progressive die. The punch is very hard and great quality material. I should mention, always wear safety glasses when hitting a punch or any tool with a hammer. Let's start drilling some holes. Using a 3 16 drill to drill out the corners prior to milling. Since this hole location on the holders isn't critical, I am not center drilling prior to actual drilling. If any accuracy would be required, I would have used a milling machine. As with most steels, drilling creates long, sharp swarf. To minimize the length of the swarf, retract the handle of the drill press slightly each time the swarf becomes too long. You can see my elbow as I'm drilling, making small retracts. A sharp drill with the correct grind easily finds the punch dimple. Watch the drill and the breakthrough. Ease up on the handle to avoid the part being grabbed by the drill. Also, use pliers to hold the workpiece whenever working close to the drill bit. Back at the bandsaw, again to reduce the amount of material I need to mill away, I saw cut the recessed area. The reason I drilled the holes is to relieve the corners when milling with a small diameter end mill. This will reduce the chatter as the end mill has very little material to cut. Having removed the excess material, I now set up the part in the milling machine. Using a quarter inch carbide end mill and milling only with the flutes. The only reason for using this end mill is due to the financial burden COVID-19 has placed on so many households, so tooling will have to wait. Setting up the next holder. Not much material to hold on to, but it is adequate. It is nice to have scribe lines to work to, not only for milling, but also for positioning in the vise. I know the vise jaw will not interfere with milling to their size required. In this milling procedure, I show more measuring than I normally show. Measuring is a large part of machining and you can never measure enough at times.
For the screw holes that will tighten the clamp against the bit, its placement is a little more critical so these holes will be done on the milling machine. The hole also is counterboard for the socket head cap screw and it's easier to do in one setup. To use an edge finder, move the probe with the finger to knock it off center. Then feed the probe slowly into the workpiece until the probe becomes concentric with the shank. Feed slowly until the probe is pushed off center. This will get you to within about a thousandth of an inch. The edge finder I am using has a 3 inch shank with a probe that is 2 tenths of an inch in diameter. Since the probe is 2 tenths, in order to pick up the edges, the axes need to be moved 1 tenth of an inch accordingly. A visual check should show the center of the probe aligning with the workpiece edge. In this case, the center of the center drill aligns with both edges. With both edges referenced, the table is moved into position. First a center drill is used to pilot the drill, followed by a 3 16 drill bit. To save time with tool changes, I did something I rarely do, that is to run an end mill in a drill chuck. I am using a 5 16 end mill to counterbore for the screw head and all the pressure is up the spindle. I am also feeding very slowly. Drill chucks generally only have three contact areas and cannot grip an end mill as well as a collet. It can be a good way to break end mills if you're not careful. Next machine step is to mill the 16 degree on the face of each holder. The 16 degree angle is clearance and the way I arrived at specifically 16 degree was due to a machinist posting in a forum stating that they use 16 degree. Since then I have found some use 12 degrees. Lines are scribed on each holder and milled accordingly. I milled the areas using a half inch carbide end mill. Whenever workpieces are clamped away from the vise jaw, use light cuts as the workpiece could move and break the end mill. To set the holders at 16 degree, I set my protractor at 16 degree and use it to align the part with the vise jaw. This is where a third hand would really be convenient.
Now we come to a more difficult setup with respects to milling the holder to place the 5 16 high speed steel bit at 45 degree as well as set the 16 degree angle. To mill the slot, a compound setup is required to set both angles. I tried my sign vise mounted on the machine vise but couldn't achieve the angle required. I was having difficulty seeing or visualizing the setup so I decided to use Fusion 360 to orient the part and provide a visual as to how the holder should be set up. It quickly became apparent as to what was required. A block with a 45 degree face and setting the holder at 16 degree on the 45 degree face would then orient the part correctly to mill the slot. I scribed lines on the bottom so that the reference would be visible to ensure the milling depths were correct. But first I realized I needed to mill the side otherwise a sharp edge would develop. I wanted to deal with it now rather than later. This is how the one holder needs to be clamped for milling the 5 16 slot. It is resting on the 45 degree block and set at a 16 degree angle. I didn't have any aluminum large enough to make a fixture but had some nylon scrap. Nylon isn't the best choice for clamping steel parts to, but for this application it worked rather well. To ensure the holder is at 16 degrees, a protractor is used to set the angle against the fixture side. A 3 16 inch high speed steel end mill is inserted into the spindle and milling commenced. Having completed the one holder, I move on to the second tool holder. This tool is easier as it only needs to be milled at a 16 degree angle. I used the same nylon fixture and indicated the top surface so that the block is laying flat. I did manage to indicate the nylon block to within about 4 thousandths of an inch. Over that distance it equates to very little over the tool holder area being milled. Using a simple protractor set at 16 degrees, I position and clamp the tool holder. I then proceed to mill the slot using a 3 16 end mill.
The slots are nearing completion. I measured the width with the gauge blocks and then finally with the high speed steel bit. I noticed that the bits are actually two thousandths of an inch wider on one side and therefore I had to open the slot a little more. I didn't want to be fighting the insertion of the high speed steel bit into the holder. That concludes part two. In part three, the clamps for both of these tools will be milled along with finishing the other two round bit tool holders. Thank you for watching.